Dr. Breuer, I must see you on a matter of life or death. Meet me at nine tomorrow morning at the Café Rosa. Matter of life or death. <laughs> Dr. Breuer? Blue Salome. How do you do? May I? Would you like a coffee? Yes, cafe latte. Waiter, cafe latte, please. My friend is preparing to kill himself. This man's death would have momentous consequences for me, for you, for all of the world. Who is this friend? The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche? Should I know of him? Not yet, but in time we shall all know of him. How do we confirm a truth? The truth is arrived at through disbelief and skepticism and not through some childlike wishing something worse. No. The desire to be in God's hands is not truth. It is a child's wish for the everlasting blow to the nipple. <laughs> we have evolutionary theory. Evolutionary theory scientifically demonstrates God's redundancy. So Darwin himself had not the courage to follow his evidence to its true conclusion. So, where are we? Surely you must realize we all have created God and all of us together have killed him. God is dead. My friend is sick. What is the nature of his illness? Headaches. Tormenting headaches. My dear lady, I will see your friend. I'm a physician. I know you can cure his physical condition. That is not why I'm here. Nietzsche suffers from the deepest despair. That is what I ask you to heal. I cannot cure despair. Ah, but you can, doctor. I have a spy. My brother, a medical student, attended the class which you described a new technique, the talking cure. Now, I can arrange to steer Nietzsche to your office, but he must believe you're treating only his headaches. Tell me, is yours a Russian accent? It is. Well, perhaps the people in Russia believe in sorcerers, but sorry, Fräulein, I am Austrian. I have no magic to offer you. May I walk you back to your hotel? I would enjoy that, but my wife will be watching from the window. I have a duty. Duty? It is my duty to be free of duty. Doctor, save me, Jim. It was hepatitis. How long do I have? It is best you put your affairs in order. Please, doctor. How long? Please, tell us. Three to six months. Are you all right, Doctor? Make sure the Pfeiffers are never built again. Of course. And cancel all their outstanding debts to me. Well, of course. A Fräulein Salome has suddenly arrived. <sighs> A very grand young woman. Show her in. But Frau Ewald has been waiting for hours. Come back here! Dr. Breuer. I see you like to do things for yourself. Doesn't that deprive men the pleasure of serving you? 
We both know that some of the services men provide are not necessarily good for women. The habits of a lifetime are not easily extinguished, my dear. Your future husband will need extensive retraining. No husband for me, ever. I would not do that to a man. Vitena, oh, you use this new technique. Do not attempt to use this mesmerism method with Nietzsche. Our patient would refuse to engage in any process he perceives as surrendering his power to another. And are you responsible for our patient's despair? He believes I am. Where has God gone? I shall tell you. God is dead. We all have killed him. You, 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 and I. God will burn you in hell! After the death of Buddha, his shadow was shown for centuries in caves. A gruesome, gruesome shadow. God will punish you, Satan! Well, given the way of people, there may still be caves, thank you, for thousands of years in which God's shadow will still be shown. Vanquish the shadow within yourself! Friedrich, Friedrich, it's Louis Salome, brilliant poet from Russia. Fascinating lecture to fall on so few ears. <laughs> Why are people so afraid of you, Professor? Oh, truth is a fearsome thing. Why do you say God is dead, and not that he never existed? What do you think? That God has ceased to be a reckoning force in people's lives. <sighs> An interesting interpretation. But if God is dead, then everything is permitted. No morals, no rules. Without God, who will organize a society? What is the solution to your godless proposition? <laughs> From what stars have we dropped down to each other here? Have it is in. I was immediately attracted to him, seduced by his intellect. We could say so much to each other with half sentences, mere gestures. He became obsessed, proposing marriage after a first meeting. I was attracted to him. But not romantically. I wanted to learn. Not to submit. <laughs> My refusal turned his love into hatred. He wrote me these crazed, insulting letters. Then he wrote about killing himself. So if I understand you correctly, you want me to persuade Nietzsche that his life is worth living. But I must accomplish this without him knowing it. You are the only doctor qualified for this psychological treatment. Uh, Frau Reywald is still waiting and still suffering. One more thing. You must read his books. I shall do everything I can to help your friend. Good night, Dr. Boyer. Good night. Stay home, Fishman. I just take out there. Sigmund. Sigmund! Where are you racing to? The most charming woman in Vienna has invited me for dinner. A more charming husband is on his way home this very minute. 
Jump in, Ziggy. I diagnosed liver cancer today. I'll never get used to my patients dying. Well, get used to it, young Dr. Freud. Children are eating. Say hello to them. <laughs> My little chickens. See what I mean, Ziggy? He hardly talks to me. Hello. By the way, I've taken on a new patient. I haven't met him yet. Suicidal tendencies. As always, it starts with a woman. <laughs> but, Josef, love sickness is not a medical condition. The story gets even better. Because the woman feels guilty, she wants me to sneak in a cure for his psychological distress, while at the same time I address his physical ailments. Surely you're not going to attempt this? I have already agreed. Why? I don't even know myself. Perhaps I need a challenge like this. You cannot say no to this woman. She could persuade a horse to lay eggs. <laughs> Our plan is working. Dr. Overbeck has persuaded Nietzsche to consult you. Neither I nor Nietzsche shall ever forget your kindness in this. The professor is here. Send him in. Good day, Herr Professor. Please, please have a seat. Tell me about your illness. Would it be more efficient to review my previous consultations? I'm sure they are excellent physicians, thank you. But I make my own diagnosis before reviewing those of my colleagues, just as I prefer to see a play before reading the reviews. Tell me, Professor, to what extent does melancholia accompany these migraine attacks? I have my black periods, but who does not? They do not have me. They're not of my illness, but of my being. A life dominated by black periods is a breeding ground for despair. Despair? No. Perhaps once, but not now. No. I'm just pregnant. <laughs> Here. My headaches are the labor pains from my, my new book. Uh, what book? Zarathustra. A young prophet bursting with wisdom and courage and truthfulness decides to enlighten the people. I teach you the Übermensch. Man is something that must be overcome. What have you done to overcome man? <laughs> what is the ape to man? <laughs> a laughing stock or a thing of shame. <laughs> Just that man shall be to the Übermensch. The people refuse to understand his words, and the prophet, realizing he's come too soon, returns to his solitude. So, like Zarathustra, I come too soon. I must ask you a personal question. Physical well-being is not separable from social and psychological well-being. Is there someone with whom you have... Uh... You're referring to sex, Doctor? Well, 
I have found that a flash of bestial pleasure is followed by hours of self-loathing. So such heard pleasures are not for me. But is there a woman in your life? Every time I have attempted to build a footbridge to others, I have been betrayed. First, there was the composer, Richard Wagner. I have suffered because of him. And later, my best friend with that woman. Tell me more about that woman. And why? It's connected to your illness. Trust me on this. I cannot afford to trust again. Then I believe, Herr Professor, that we can proceed no further. Have a safe journey home, Herr Professor. Stupid, stupid hey. animal! Hey, stop, stop it! Here. Stop it! Hey. Leave the horse alone! Leave it! Leave it! Oh. Herr Professor! Are you all right? Again. Friday afternoon, same time. Good night. Breathe deeply, Bertha. Did you have any dreams last night? Yes. I dreamt. You were making love to me. Really? Yes. I'm just going to examine you. Don't worry. It's perfectly what, normal. What do you do? No, Procedure. No. What? No, 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 you are now a free man. Oh. Go back to Russia, you syphilitic whore! He's mine! No! He's mine! 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 He's mine. There was a time in our lives when we were so close that nothing seemed to obstruct our friendship, when only a footbridge separated us. I asked you, do you want to cross the footbridge to me? But you did not want to. What do you make of it, Siggy? I'm not sure. Let's reason it out. The first man can no longer cross because he feels he is submitting his power to the other person. Yes, yes, you're right. He interprets any expression of positive sentiment as a bid for power. Mm. It makes it almost impossible to get close to him. It's all here. I see it. And reveal his identity. And why not? Perhaps if you lend this book to Ziggy, you won't hide in your study all night reading it. Matilda, stop. What am I to do when I watch you withdraw more and more from me and the children? First that woman, now this Nietzsche. Friedrich, 
Nietzsche? To this day, I regret listening to you. The transfer of Bertha to another doctor remains one of the great shames of my life. Excellent books. Very few copies have been sold. Then your publisher is a fool for not championing these with his life's blood. Your writing is short, brief sentences, but... It is my ambition to say in ten sentences what others say in the whole book. <laughs> As to your migraines, I believe their fundamental cause lies in stress. Due to upsetting events in your work, your family, your personal relationships. I've given up teaching. I have no home to look after, no wife to quarrel with, no children to discipline. I have no obligations to anyone. I have no stress. Your extreme isolation is stress in itself. Great thinkers choose their own company, no? Undisturbed by the mob. Consider thorough. Spinoza. Buddha. Professor, stress is our enemy. My task is to help you reduce stress in your life. I propose that you enter my Lozon clinic for one month of observation and treatment. We have new medications for migraine. I will visit you daily. I'm unable to pay for such services. Money doesn't matter to me. It will be free. And why are you doing this? You came to me for help. I offer it. I'm a doctor. Far too simple. Human motivation is far more complex. What is your motive? Why are you here? Because of strong pressure from my friends and my headaches. I ask again, what is your motive if you don't request payment for such services? One practices one's profession. A cobbler cobbles, a baker bakes, a doctor doctors. Why do you write? Why philosophize you? You earn nothing from your work. I do not claim I philosophize for you. Whereas you, Doctor, continue to pretend that your motive is to serve me. And such claims have nothing to do with human motivation. Now, what are your motives? My motives? Yes. My motives? Who can answer such a question? I believe you are destined to become a great philosopher. My mission is to aid you in becoming who you are. So you as my savior can become even greater? I did not say that. Do you know my patients are the leading scientists, artists, and musicians in Vienna? Yes, and at this moment, you use their eminence to enhance your authority with me. I will never exploit your name. I will still be used by you. Nonsense! City! Your charity, your techniques to help me, to manage me. All of these make you stronger at my expense. This is a perfect example of why you cannot dissect your own psyche. Your vision is blurred, Professor. You need help. You are about to make a mistake. I've been gone already! You crazed, deluded creature. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Thank you.
Eu pensam Mitya is dying in my hotel. Get me some ice. Dear God. Bring me some blankets. Huh? Hey, Professor. <gasps> Professor Nietzsche. Friedrich. Huh? Take the pain. Huh? Take the pain in. You will feel better. Help me. Is a poison or the sleep inducer, you could have died. Oh, living, dying, who cares? I shall be in your office tomorrow, is what I hope. Before my train leaves for Basel. Basel? Yes. Surely not, not until this crisis is I'm over. I'm leaving tomorrow. Part of me holds some strange hope that by helping this bizarre creature overcome his own suffering, I might defeat my own. Defeat your suffering? You are the envy of every doctor in Vienna. One feels things at 40 that one cannot possibly know at 25. I must stop him from leaving. I must be away. Perhaps if you had fully disclosed yourself to Nietzsche, you might have engaged him. Once you gain his trust, he might open up like a steamed clam. I think I know where, Ziggy. I think I know a way. You are documents and receipt, Herr Professor. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Professor Nietzsche, may I have a word before you leave? I have a proposition to make, Professor. Perhaps never before made by a doctor to his patient. I propose a professional exchange. For one month, I will act as physician to your body, if you will act as physician to my mind. What do you mean? That you doctor me and I, I'll teach you philosophy? No, no, no. Not teach me. Heal me. Of what? Despair. I see no despair. Not on the surface, but underneath. My mind is invaded by alien thoughts. I've lost sight of where I live. I'm terrified of death, yet I often think of ending my life. But I cannot help you with this. I have no training. Who is trained? Such healing is not a part of the medical discipline. What do I know of this? You know more than any man alive. Aren't your books entire treaties on despair? I can't cure despair. I only know how to tolerate it. Then teach me how to tolerate a life of despair. You write that your mission is to save humankind from illusion, 
and aimlessness, to create a new code of behavior, a new morality free of superstition. It's all there in your books. This is my offer. You enter my clinic for 30 days. I will observe and treat your medical illness daily. In return, you become my physician and help me talk about my life's concerns. Look, I'm indebted to you more than any man. You saved my life. I'm just a writer. I'm not a doctor. You can pay your debt by saving my life the way I saved yours. So what? I do this for you to relieve my debt? My motivation is entirely self-serving. I want to save my life. But are you strong enough to do this? I will persuade him that he is the only one who can help me. And then what? Then I will reverse the roles. He will once again be the patient, and I will be the physician. And what happens when Nietzsche turns to you to cure his despair? Ziggy, I'm convinced there's something healing in unburdening. Look at the Catholics. Their priests have been offering confessions for centuries. Nietzsche is a solitary man. Yet a few nights ago, he opened up to me. A real plea for help. Help me. What you saw were his unconscious desires. Those that, if they were liberated, could scream for help in daylight. The goal of my talking cure is to liberate those buried desires, to allow the patient to ask for help openly. But is liberation the right term? Isn't it integration that we are after? Integration of the unconscious with the conscious. Yes. Yes, Sigmund. Very good. Take a seat. <sighs> Remove your stethoscope and your coat as well. I made a list of your complaints. One, you have a general unhappiness. Two, you are besieged by alien thoughts. Three, self-hatred. Four, fear of aging. Five, fear of death. Six, urges towards suicide. Anything else? I feel completely remote and distant from my wife trapped in a world not of my own choosing. And there's that one more problem now. Oh, two. <laughs> <laughs> now you make me feel uncomfortable. It is my task to make you feel comfortless. No, 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 Professor, your approach is all wrong. Mr. Breuer, we made an agreement. Yeah. Mr. Breuer? Do you want us to proceed, Mr. Breuer?
You've mentioned your wife last, which tells me it begins there. What initiated this change in your feelings toward her? <clears throat> Two years ago, I took on the case of a young woman, this patient. I, I, I gave her the pseudonym Anna O. Oh, suffers from what we doctors call hysterical behavior. Try to relax. <laughs> During our daily meetings, she opened up to me, shared the details of every disturbing event of the last 24 hours. She called these confessions chimney sweeping. <laughs> I prefer to call it the talking cure. Unfortunately, the course of treatment was terminated by its insane ending. How? I fell in love with my patient. She and her mother were friendly with my wife. Oh. Oh. Berta. Uh. What's wrong? Uh. Stop it, Berta. Uh. 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 What's wrong? Oh. Uh. What's uh. I'm pregnant. Uh. 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 I'm pregnant. With your husband's baby. Oh, oh, Bertha. Oh, oh. Here comes Dr. Moyer's little baby. Bertha! Oh, Stop it, Bertha! Bertha! It was a delirium speaking, of course, her, her, her illness. But my wife forbade me to see her again. What did you do? I'm sorry, my dear. I cannot be your doctor anymore. But I've done nothing wrong. Of course you haven't. I will refer you to a colleague of mine. He will take good care of you. Please don't let me go. Please. I have no choice. You will always be the only man in my life. Always. Can you imagine? How terrible it was to hear those words. They were evidence of the damage I had done. I left her weakened. Crippled. You are responsible for all of your thoughts and deeds. But she, by virtue of this so-called illness, she is exonerated from everything. Who has damaged whom? Who has weakened whom? Doesn't this cripple Bertha, as you call her, have greater power over you? An excellent beginning. He even developed a list of my problems. Breuer is a curious mix. Intelligent yet blind. Sincere but devious. Let him continue to think that this is what we are doing. He is possessed by a woman who shreds him to pieces, <laughs> and he licks her bloody fangs. <laughs> I love it, Joseph. What do you love, Freddy? Tchaikovsky. Why? Swan Lake! <laughs> 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 Joseph, look! We're running out of time! <laughs> backwards! I'm running out of time! Backwards. Faster, Joseph! Pedal faster! <laughs> Take me, Joseph. Take me. <laughs> Don't worry, your shirt does! Six stones may break my bones, but death will never hurt me! <laughs> I feared that after yesterday's confessions, you would think less of me. Do not worry about what others think of you. I suspect you find sex disagreeable. I do not object to sex. What I hate is the man who begs for it. Who surrenders himself to some crafty woman. 
who turns his lust into her strength. Lust is part of life. And nothing must interfere with the development of the hero which is inside you. And if lust stands in the way, lust must be overcome. Be more practical. All you give me are quotes from your books, philosophy. First time I've attempted to put my philosophy into practical use. Choose between comfort yeah, and the truth. Are they mutually exclusive? You want to choose the pleasure of growth, prepare yourself for some pain. Don't let pain shrink. Go, be part of the herd. Look at this tree. Requires stormy weather. If it is to attain its proud height, uh -huh. creativity and discovery, hmm? but begotten in pain. I wish for simple things. To sleep without nightmares. To live without tension. Lie down. Why? It's the best inducement for recalling memories. Lie down, please. Close your eyes. Let us imagine an icy mountain peak. And we see this little man trudging to the top. He's looking into the horror of his existence. He's encountering times devouring jaws. But he sees too much. His insignificance, this mere little speck. That he is. And now his fear becomes so raw that he welcomes lust into his mind. And he stops looking into this chasm. And he begins to spend his time recollecting these miracles as how his little crippled Bertha moves her legs, her lips, and her arms and her breath. And his mind, which was built for the noblest of ideas, becomes clogged now with trash. And that is how he is today. He is just rummaging through the rubbish of Bertha, as if it contained the answer to his prayers. Well. What do you think of this man? Yourself? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Talk to me, Yosef. This is my way. Where is yours? He asked you to lie on the couch. Why? He said it was the best way for recalling memories. Interesting. He is honoring his contract, but offers no support. My confessions have failed to produce even the slightest admission of his own obsession. Is your frustration rooted in your competition with him? Not at all. I'm a physician, Sigi. I do not meet with my patient for my pleasure. But Joseph, I've read his books. He has more penetrating knowledge of mankind than any other person. I think he may be perhaps the greatest psychologist who has ever lived. You can best help him by letting him help you.
Joseph? Joseph, it's after midnight. Are you coming to bed? Soon. I feel healthy. I wish to waste none of our precious time on these physical exams. Before we begin, the last time we met, you called me Joseph. I like that. Should we use first names? Friedrich or Fritz? Friedrich? My best friend at school was called Friedrich. He used to call me the lad of infinite promise. What happened to the lad? He became a successful doctor, and respected, and rich. Then you have fulfilled your goals. You are, you are satisfied? I have fulfilled my goals, yes. Am I satisfied? No. How did you choose your goals? No, don't, don't think, just chimney sweep. Goals are part of my culture. They're in the air, you breathe them in. Like every young Jewish boy, I wanted to climb out of the ghetto to succeed. My father was the great teacher of my life. No, Papa. No, Joseph. I won't encourage bad habits. No, I never chose goals. They were just there, like, like an accident. And yet not to take possession of your goals is just that. To let your life be an accident. What is wrong, Yosef? I've had a sudden and very painful understanding of the obvious. Time is irreversible. The sands of my life are running out. I'm in lockstep with all people marching towards my death. So you see clear vision as a wound. Hmm? Knowing that as my death approaches, I'm impotent and insignificant, yes. Does not mean existence has no purpose. On the contrary, as death creeps closer, the value of life increases. You must learn to say yes, Joseph, but say yes to every minute of life. Huh? Be passionate. Be a free-thinking spirit. Rise above your limitations. Be the Ubermensch. Hmm? Please. Please, Fräulein, will you take a seat? The Russian is here. Let her wait. Good afternoon, Frau Petrick. Please, take a seat. 
Herr Schubert, hello. Please take a seat. The doctor will be with you shortly. Please, oh, understand. I'm very sorry. Please, the doctor will be with you. Please, the doctor will be with you. Frau the doctor can see you. What a pleasure. I had forgotten. Then look more carefully this time. I'm distressed at having so little time to offer you. The price is success, Dr. Breuer. You like to live dangerously. Tell me, why didn't you write so that I could arrange a proper time for you? I am concerned about our patient. Our patient? Have you graduated from medical school since our last meeting? You must read these letters Nietzsche sent me. He writes as if to punish me. You are a woman without sensitivity or spirit, incapable of love, a predator clothes as a house cat. Why does he regard me as such a monster? I deserve to know the outcome of my efforts. The outcome of your experiment. It's been lovely to see you. But I must return to my work. Where is he? I cannot tell you where he stays or the state of his condition. You turn your back to me. I cannot violate my patient's privacy. Perhaps you are not capable of being hypnotized. Perhaps. I didn't tell you she left some of Nietzsche's letters with me. Mm. And? He berates me for feeding at the trough of lust. And all the while, he himself, just like me, is rummaging through the trash of his own mind. If you think he should be answered before his falsifications, may I remind you of your own? of the deceptive premise of your arrangement with him. Of the two patients in this relationship, I have become the more urgent case. I'm taking a run. What are you doing, soldier? Trying to kill myself, sir. Carry on, soldier. Yes, sir. General, help me, please. The interesting thing is that in my dream, the general was you. And why me? A symbol of your unwillingness to join me in a down-to-earth manner, perhaps? Be open with me. I presume that, like all men, you have suffered from lovesickness. Have you ever tasted the pain of love? Yes. And? I must know. Let me remind you of Goethe's words. Be a man. Do not follow me. But yourself. Teaching philosophy and using it in the real world are very different undertakings. You wish for something to soothe you now? Then go. Suckle on the tip of superstition. Hmm? Whatever you do, don't go to reason. Unfortunately, the theatrical director of my mind, the one who stages all these scenes with Bertha, is unaffected by reason. Of course not. What reasonable man could love such a cripple? Oh, stop it! Berta is intelligent, beautiful, and loving. Loving? How? She tried to seduce you into adultery. Almost destroyed you. You are too hard on her. Well, next time you go to her, don't forget to bring your whip. Yes. I think to love such a woman is to hate life. Berta is a fine woman. May I remind you she became ill because of her father's death? And may I remind you all fathers died? 
I think the time for excuses is over. Friedrich, I need your help. Attack my obsession. It's ruining me. Do you want war? Yes. You will follow my directives without question. Absolutely. Sit. Please. Close your eyes. Imagine your life with Bertha. Oh, but I don't Please. want to. Please, Joseph. Relax. Now, you're starting your day. You're having your breakfast with honor O. I want you to compose a list of 10 insults. And I want you to hurl the matter. To her face? Yes. What, like, ugly? Precisely. Ugly, yes. Ugly. Scream it out! Ugly! Stupid! Cow! Whore! Sow! Cross-eyed! Monster! Cripple! That's nine. One more. Idiot! Good. How was she responding? I love you. Banish the tranquil idea you've composed. See Bertha as she would be now, each morning. Spasms. Her arms and legs in spasms. Cross-eyed, mute, hallucinating, stuttering. <laughs> See her as the infant she longs to revert to. an adult sitting on the toilet as she does each day. Hi, Joseph. If you are alone and even begin to think of her, shout, go away. I hate you as loud as you can. You pinch yourself as hard as you can. Say it. Go away. Pinch yourself. Pinch yourself. Pinch yourself as hard as you can. Go away. I hate you. Listen to me. If you're ever alone, you even begin to think about her. You shout, go away. I hate you as loud as you can. Say it. I hate you. 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 Louder. Say it. I hate you. Say it. Yosef, if you're ever alone, you even begin to think of her. You shout, go away. I hate you as loud as you can. Say it. As loud as you can. Say it. I hate you. Go away. I hate you. I love you. Go away! I hate you! <laughs> what are we waiting for, Fishman? Hey, hot! close to bursting. After yesterday, I feel like a bear being trained to dance. It's true. I've lowered you and myself. And the teacher should be a razor of men. We are missing something. Yes. You've neglected to understand the meaning behind your obsession. How can we discover the meaning of something that I myself have concealed? By talking about it. What would your life be if there was no Bertha? 
Life without Beata would be a colorless one. Everything would be decided. This medical bag, these black clothes. I'm a scientist, yet science has no color. I need passion. I need magic. That's what Bertha represents. Life without passion, without mystery. Who can live such a life? But he's expecting me. You're lord to mystery. You're lord to danger. But I hate danger. I live my life safely. Living safely is what's dangerous. Living safely is dangerous. Nietzschean, there is no Professor Nietzsche here. Check again. There is no Professor Nietzsche here. Perhaps Bertha represents my desire to escape my deadly safe life, the trap of time. Time is our burden, Joseph. The greatest challenge is to live in spite of it. I hate women with lips. Why are you show me this? Because she has a combination of lips, eyes and breasts that give her almost superhuman powers. Powers to do what? When I am with her, I feel that I'm in the center of an orderly, tranquil universe. An intensely beautiful place where there are no questions about life or purpose, like walking on clouds. Where do your thoughts go now? Her eyes, they glisten. She doesn't speak, yet she talks to me. And what does she say? She says, Joseph, you are adorable. And in that moment, I am. When she told me one day that she dreamed of us making love, I was ecstatic. What a victory to enter a place where no man has ever been. Have you ever known a better, Frederick? Friedrich. I once knew a woman who could not be denied. Yes. Then tell me more about this woman. What was her name? Do you still love her? We are more in love with desire than the desired. Oh, 
Why? The relief of disclosure. Perhaps in 50 years, this talking cure might develop into precise science. I thought I could help him. No longer. He has everything to offer me. I'm wondering if part of this talking cure process involves learning what the patient transfers to his doctor. What would it be to live as Nietzsche lives? No house, no obligations, no wife, no responsibilities. Goodbye, my dear Lou. I won't see you again. You've caused damage. You've done harm. And not only to me, but to all people who loved me. And this sword hangs over you. But I hope you will make good to Pauri what you couldn't make good to me. Yes! You make music sick, Ricard. For you are sick! You are sick! I visit my parents' grave once a month. Would you like to come with me today? It's less than one hour's ride from the city. Why didn't you tell me your mother's name was Bertha? She died when I was three. I have very few memories of her. No conscious memories. 
Are you suggesting I love Bertha because she and my mother share the same name? My mother is hardly real to me. Bertha Pappenheim is the most real thing in my life. I think your obsession with Bertha has never been about Bertha. A year after my father died, I had a dream. This grave opens, and my father rises up, and he runs to this church. It's where he preached, and he grabbed this small child, and he climbed back into the grave. I always believed that this dream predicted my brother's death, but I suspect it was my own. It was my own fear. I was that boy in my father's arms. Same fears expressed in your dream where you plunged towards the closed coffin. Who is inside the coffin, Josef? I don't remember. But who is the one who stops you from falling? Your death. Your cripple, Bertha? Or perhaps your mother? The real Bertha. Who, Josef? Who is inside the coffin? I can still see her face. She's smiling at me. Mm. Your mother. How could she leave me? I never really let her go. Perhaps adult figures enter a child's mind and refuse to leave. You must be as frightened as I am of death and godlessness. We must die, but at the right time. Death only loses its terror when one has consummated one's life. Have you consummated your life? I have achieved a great deal. But have you lived your life? Or have you been lived by it? You stand outside your life, grieving for some life that you, you never lived. I cannot change my life. I have my family, my patients, students. It's too late. I cannot tell you how to live differently. If I did, you'd still be living by some other's design. But perhaps I could give you a gift, Joseph. Maybe I could give you a thought. What if some demon were to say to you that this life, as you now live it and have lived it in the past, you would have to live once more, but innumerable times more. There would be nothing new in it. Every pain, every joy, every unutterably small or great thing in your life would just return to you. The same succession, same sequence, again and again, like an hourglass of time. Imagine infinity. Consider the possibility that every action you choose, Joseph, you choose for all time. Then all unlived life would remain inside you, unlived, throughout eternity. You like this idea? Do you hate it, Rich? I hate it. Why? The only thing.
thing I love about my life is the thought that I have fulfilled my duties to my wife and children. Duty? Your duty is a sham, Joseph. It's the curtain you hide behind. To truly build your children, you build yourself first. And as for your wife, that will break her from this prison you share, huh? and be broken by it. Hmm? Are you sure about this? To continue with the sense that I have not lived, that I have not tasted freedom. The idea fills me with horror. Help me, Ziggy. You two are free. Freedom? This is madness. Suddenly I find that I am old. I am facing death without having lived my life. Since when is there your life and my life? We made a covenant to share our lives. Leave if you want. But not until I tell you about the cruel joke of freedom. I wish I had your freedom. Freedom of a man to obtain an education, to choose a profession. I wish I had the vocabulary, the logic to express just how foolish you sound. Matilda, if I am able to find my life, we will both be better off. Perhaps I will come back to this life, but it must be my choice. Have you forgotten about the choice you made in marrying me? What choices does a deserted wife have? You are young, rich, attractive. You will be as free as I am. We have three children. Matilda, I should have been I before I became we. Word, word, words, Joseph. You cannot live in words. I choose my life to Joseph. And I choose to tell you, you cannot return to this house because it will no longer be your home. Once you leave, I will no longer be your wife. Mama. Say goodbye to your father, children. Forever. Please, Papa, don't leave. Get out there. Leave. If that's what you want. Robert, I'm still your father. No, you're not my father anymore. Robert.
Nietzsche is right. My freedom has been here all along for the taking. Now is my last chance. This is my one and only life. I'm looking for Berta Pappenheim. She's in the garden with her doctor. Should I inform her you're here? No, thank you. I should wait. Please, wait for her upstairs. Thank you. I love you. You will always be the only man in my life. <gasps> Josef, how are you? How could I have given up everything? You'd given up everything long before you met me. Yes, but now I have nothing. And nothing is everything. In order to grow strong, you must first sink your roots deep into nothingness, but learn to face your loneliest. Loneliness. My wife. My children. How could I have left them? You must be ready to burn yourself in your own flame. How could you become new if you would not first become ashes? Yo, that! 
Come back! Joseph! Joseph! Exactly as you instructed, hypnotize you using your watch as a pendulum. Here it is, Joseph, on your desk. I asked you if you wanted to stop. Now I know what it would be like to live differently. Max and Rachel have arrived for dinner. Matilde? You complain you don't see enough of me? Yet when I'm here, you want to desert me? I've been away, my dear. But now I am back. I'm glad you're here. Dr. Freud, my husband, needs a doctor. It's been. Marry me, Matilda. Please. <laughs> I think we did this 15 years ago. And I choose to do it again. Today. And every day for the rest of our lives. <sighs> so, tell me. How did you cast her out? Well, I was terrified by aging and death. I fought back, but blindly. In desperation, I attacked my wife and sought rescue in the arms of one who had no rescue to give. In a certain sense, I've betrayed you, yes. I've been so dishonest with you. Completely. I was myself involved with a woman. A 
few months ago. Her name was Lou. Not so unlike your pattern. Beautiful girl. I fell in love. She just appeared to be my, my twin brain, my soul's mate. And she led me on to believe that I was the man for whom she was destined, and I believed her. And when I offered myself to her, she spurned me in favor of my best friend in the world. I must tell you, Yosef, there is not, not one day that goes by, not even an hour, for I do not think of that woman. She is your bed. But you see, you've been doing double work here, yours and mine. I'm like the most cowardly of women. And I crouch behind your back, you know, <laughs> letting you Face all your dangers, all alone. You have courage. Friedrich, there is something I must tell you. Dr. Breuer? How do you do? You must read these letters Nietzsche has sent me. These are my private letters. You did see her then? Yes, but I refused her. So all of this is just a pretense? I made a promise to help you. I never betrayed that promise. What did she do? She took you by the arm? Told you she had to spend more time with you? I shared one, one holy moment with her at Lake Water. It's the only holy moment I've ever known. No one fell in love with me, ever. Ever. Friedrich. It may have been a holy moment for you, but not for her. What are you saying? She never mentioned like Orta? No. I feel such a loss. I think I've lost Lou. And you. Everything I just... Now you could extrude better from your mind than you have a family. You have your family and I have my pretenses. My secret little ways of tolerating my aloneness. But I glorify it, don't I? And I just don't want to die alone. I don't want my body just to be discovered by its stench. Lou, soften that fear for me for a while. But you're right. Such an illusion, Fiji. Such an illusion. Fiji, she does care about you. She went to extremes to help you. If your tears had a voice, what would they say? I feel so ashamed. Tell me. My tears would say we're free. He never let us out until Dr. Breuer opened the gate. Sadness behind those it's tears. Enough, it's not sadness. It's such a relief. It's such a relief. It's the first time I'm revealing my loneliness. <laughs> it's melting, also. It's melting away. The paradox. Isolation exists only in isolation. Once shared, it evaporates. My dear friend. We are friends. I 
like saying that. No one ever said this to me. I like it. We are friends. Friedrich. It's good. Stay with us tonight. Have supper with me and my family. Ah, uh, would be to abandon my mission, Josef. The time we went our ways. We were friends and have become strangers to each other. This is as it ought to be. We do not want either to conceal or obscure the fact as if we had to be ashamed of it. We are two ships, each of which has its goal and its course. <clears throat> and finally, Dr. Breuer, we have to become strangers to one another because it's the law to which we are subject. Have a safe journey, my dear friend.